Okay, this lesson for the Cornet Project class answers the question, what happens when the purpose of the gospel is ignored or it's something overlooked and missing? Well, a lot of the negative externalities or most of what we hear in religious banter is what I understand to be negative externalities, unforeseeables by us who are being asked to uh, hear out and consider these solutions to problems that don't exist. So the solution doesn't have a problem often. And then secondly, it has a root cause. If we do, as the Bible said, John the Baptist said, the ax is laid at the root of the tree. Well, let's go back to that root of the problem and see what was missing. So we'll start with the purpose of the gospel. And that's in John 20, 31. And we'll go ahead and do our koine. So we can have our lesson and enjoy the uh, learning from it. So John 20, 31 says, these things, and remember there were many other signs did Jesus do, so many that had they been written down, the world couldn't contain them. So it says, these things, you see the reduplicated stem, and it's have been written. And of course, you know, in perfect tense, you know, and remains on record, has been written and remains on record, Hina, in order that, in order that Pistu Sete. This is simple action that you all, plural, you all might believe. Punctual action, remember that, that simple dot. Hoti, that, oh, sorry, that. Ho Jesus, the Jesus. Misspelled. The Jesus. The Jesus. Es, then is the Christos, the Christ. Hoio, the Son. To the of the God, Kai, and as ones who are believing, Pistu Antes, and as ones who are believing. Notice this continuous action here. These are all people who are already believing, the ones who are believing. Eke, ekete, excuse me. Notice this up here. Sete, ekete. Yes. And I left out one of the in order that's and in order that. Hina. So and in order that. Just freehand in it so we can correct ourselves as we go. And in order that as ones who are already believing, already, I'll just go ahead and write that down, already. Remember, believe is always first, then you're believing. At Gate, you all might be having, you all might be having so ain. So, ain having life in to in the onomati 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 in the name out to of him of him. Here we go. There we go. 
So we notice the purpose now. So it's written so that you all might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the God. And in order that as ones who are believing already, you all might be having life in the name of him. Now let's look at John 3.16 for just a moment. And remember this purpose that's governing this conversation. So let's go to John 3.16. Hutos, so in this manner, for, that's gar, post-positive conjunction, in this manner, agapason, he loved, now who's the he here? Well, it's the God, the theos, the God, so it says, for the God loved in this manner, Tan Kosman, the world. And we'll notice there's no contradiction here. Hoste, in so much that, in so much that, Tan we on the son of him, how to, of him, of him, notice this here. Um, yeah. Mono, mono gene. Yeah, that's it. Mono gene. It's the only begotten, or this is where we use the strand only begotten, but it's actually only related. That's the word genetic, and it's an adjective, related son. I'll just put the only related one. Yes, he gave Edoken, Edoken, he gave, my goodness, get my languages mixed up. He gave Okay, so notice this. For in this manner, the God loved the world in so much that he gave the son of him, the only related one he gave, he gave in order that, in order that, pos hope is own, that in order that, This is every, and this would be one who is already believing. There we go. Into him, ace, into Alton, him, may not apo. Laytime in him might not perish. There's might not perish, but rather, but rather, eke he might. Sorry, got a Yoda subscript. Might be having, and it's ing, life zoane ionion. Life eternal. Might be having life eternal. Now, very quickly, uh, let's look at our board. You can just take your phone and go to. Uh, blueletterbible.org. That's what I use. So we'll back up, look at our lesson very quickly here. And John 3, 16, for Hutos, Agapason, the God, the world, so that the son of him, oh, I left out the definite article, Ton. Again, freehand, and we can correct it. And he gave in order that everyone who is believing 
into him might not operate to be destroyed, but rather might be having Zoane eternal life. Okay, very good. We got that. And now you can just scroll to your text once you're finished. Well, freehand it and then go to your text. It becomes a little, uh, it's iterated practice. It's for us. But I think you'll notice how large the externalities are in just a moment when I point a few things out. These things have been written or that you might believe that Jesus Christ, the yes, yeah, the Christ, the Son of the God, and in order that as ones are believing, maybe having, might be having life in the name of Him. Okay, so we got that. And we can notice now the uh, puncture action, might believe, and then notice ones who are already believing. And between believe and believing is where a person's born again. And there's really nothing to argue about any longer. Uh, when we studied it out, worded it out, the text made it very clear. But interesting, let's go to Mark 16, uh, 15 for just a moment. There we go. And then when you're, while you're looking at it, you'll notice that it tells us to, and he said to them, when you have proceeded into the world, preach the gospel. Okay, into all the world. And so it's all the world. So when we talk about this here, we have in Mark 16, 15, for example, It's all the world. And it's the same term here, ton kosman. There. So let's stop right there and then make some observations. You remember, uh, we're dealing with things that really aren't necessary when we allow the purpose or notice the purpose of the gospel to be written. God's love for the entire or the world, all the world, the world, including people, all the people, was insomuch that he gave the son of him, the only begotten, only related son. I know there was debate about some say he's eternally generated, but this says he's eternally related. He's, it doesn't say generated, related. It's an adjective. So the only related one, only related one is an adjective. There's the noun. The son of him is what it's referring to. In order that everyone who's already believing into him might not perish, but rather, but rather, he might be having life eternal. There's life. There's eternal. And there it is. So it's interesting because we don't see the text saying in order that, for example, the eternally select, the eternally saved, the eternally justified might believe. Um, that's, it doesn't say any of that at all. Now, we know at the time there were people who believed in the Messiah preached by Moses and the prophets and wanted to know which one he was. Is this the one or should we wait for another, as even John the Baptist asked? And Jesus attested to them who he was with his signs and miracles. Matter of fact, John's gospel said, Prior to this text, many other signs did Jesus do, so many that we, the world couldn't contain them should they be written down. Now, let me move on for a moment. So we notice it says that you all might believe, but the governing purpose, even John 3.16, has the purpose that you might believe. So that when you notice the love of the world, all of it, everyone in it, so that the one who's already believing into him might not perish, well, that would then persuade us to be a believer. To believe. That's the whole point of it. The whole, the entire gospel is that. The Good Shepherd, John 10, for example. John 10, the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. I don't know why I'm writing that. I should just go ahead and explain it. But when it says he laid down life for his sheep, you'd never hear someone say, aha, it was only for his sheep, therefore it's limited. Well, that was so that you might believe that he's the Christ, that he's the Christ, the son of the God. And that as one who now, as ones who are already believing, you might be having life in his name as well. So there would never, we would never have heard of something called limited, limited atonement. 
that would have been unheard. For example, even total hereditary depravity, meaning total inability to be persuaded to believe, and whatever that is, we'd have never heard of that. I'll just put that there. We would have never heard of that. We would have never heard of anything like that. We'd never heard of unconditional election since the issue here is for a person to believe so that they may have, might have life. So commingling and whatever's happened, uh, it seems to be efforts to correct and to uh, guard against something that's not actually, uh, let's say it's not the problem of the text. Uh, even when it says he died for the sins of his people, his people, that's what the Messiah, the true Messiah would do. That's why we would want to trust him. If you heard of a good shepherd who wouldn't lay down his life for a sheep, that wouldn't be very persuasive. If you heard of a Messiah, a deliverer who wouldn't die for the sins of his people, that wouldn't be very persuasive for us, especially us outside the covenant community. When you think about uh, the difficulties in the Old Testament for those in the covenant community to be faithful, to live according to this covenant, this good news of the coming Messiah and extend that to all the nations. Jesus himself said he would take that privilege and that responsibility and give it to a fruit bearing kind of people. And that's what we have today. We have Jew and Gentile are one today uh, in Christ and outwardly demonstra demonstrated in the ecclesia. So we would have never seen his people causing us to think of limited. Uh, he's the one that said as while being evil ones, you all have noticed how to give good things and you continue to notice how to give good things to your own children. You give a fish in instead of a serpent. You give bread instead of a stone. So we would have never had these things come to our mind, nor would we have ever noticed these things had we been scripted first. Because the scope of the gospel, we have all the world. We go and preach to every creature. So that's quite iterative all the world and every creature. So that settles that uh, in Acts, not 2021. 20, I misquoted that yesterday or Sunday. But it says he said that the Father is always announcing alongside to all men everywhere, in every place, that they should be minding in association with, and that is toward his Son and should trust him. And that's what the Father said in the Gospels. He said, this is my son, be listening to him. And he uh, sent his son into the world. He sent prophets into the world to be the forerunners of his son. So, yes, it's difficult right now to think of the implication that's being suggested. And I'm adamantly affirming that the gospel is sufficient when correctly understood. And Jesus, the master teacher, uh, did not produce, provide and give us a gospel through word, action, deed and doctrine that would then need to be uh, corrected and uh, filtered and processed and sifted. So we'd have endless flummoxes today. Uh, they, they don't actually exist uh, to question, well, how many people did God love when he sent his son, when it says the world? Well, just look at the commission answers that and then look at the kinsman. Uh, what's going on here? Only related. That brings up. Uh, kinsman redemption. So remember, atonement is for sins. So we can just take this limited out of here. Atonement is for sins. Redemption is for kins. See, we don't have a contradiction here. We have men who notice, they noticed to do good while being evil, while evil. So there's not a problem. Well, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone that's able to believe it. it there, none of that is in the text, nor would it ever be necessary. All that's a negative externality superimposed. And now it's grown, grown so big, as some have said, too big to fail. <clears throat> and that was a mantra back in 2008, maybe, when they were trying to underwrite and shore up some of these corporate giants or whatever you want to call it. And we had to have whatever they call it, a government bailout or something because they said they're too big to fail. Well, it looks like some of the constructs have become so large 
they're they're so large now, and uh, we can lose sight of the superiority of the scriptures, the precision of the gospel. Even when he says the good shepherd, his sheep never hunger, never thirst, never die, never perish. That's a result of our own actions. So those who say, well, I might perish, I might die, I might hunger, I might thirst. Uh, he said not even one wolf would take them from my hand. They say, but we might just wander off. and Well, we can't wander off and walk away. The uh, good shepherd is always retrieving us. And we're all, once we've gone from lost sheep, <clears throat> lost sheep, when we believe we become his sheep, Jesus said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And the account of the hireling contrasted with the good shepherd, everyone is sheep. And he was contrasting his uniquely uh, qualified, his unique qualifications as a good shepherd. He doesn't have to hire out someone to help compensate for his watch care over one of his flocks. He can take care of all of us. Matter of fact, he even said it was expedient that he go away and send and ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit so that it would be better for us. Well, of course, now he can be 100% in every church, among in every flock that he oversees, and all of his churches, he can be there, all of him can be there all of the time, caring for us and watching over us. So we really don't have, I know this is somewhat radical to suggest or imply that the gospel is so superlative that the message that we've been entrusted to preach is so clear, so precise, it doesn't need compensation. That is compensatory constructs or subsidiary text. We don't need the jargon. Uh, we don't need those who say, uh, well, Kenneth Gentry, uh, if you listen to him, he was he's the one that said that uh, the condition is you have to be one of God's selected ones one of his elect or you won't have eternal life. And then he said, uh, elect is unknowable. So as striking as that is, it's very comforting because I, I trust what he said. He's saying that my name's not on it. I know it's, we said that we said this in order that you all might believe not in order that, uh, someone is left out or that someone only certain people are included that's not in the text it's not in the text at all now if it were what we now have back we go from uh, and come back into the gospel and import all these things it's called eisegesis and we bring in all of these flummoxes and these contradictions it'll be because we didn't notice the purpose so if we notice how serious this is the manner of god's love that he loved the whole world in so much that he gave the son of him, of him, the only related one. Now, kinsman comes to mind, as I've said before, redemptions for kins, atonement for sins. And of course, the even the uh, technology or methodology or forensic called um, eternal selection, uh, that's unknowable by someone who's considered a high Calvinist. Well, he will get no argument from me. It's just according to his definition, incorrect, offline, unscripted definition of election. He's correct. Now, according to the Bible, it's just the opposite. And that's another story. But this will tell us why and why there's so many ex negative externalities. So on one hand, you have, let's say, uh, Calvinists who say you must be one of the elect, but it's unknowable. Or an Arminian who says, well, you might be having eternal life but you need to keep it or try not to lose it or whatever they say. I think I think a new word is forfeit it. Uh, I'm not sure uh, why they would add that, uh, except they don't notice the purpose of the text. They don't notice eternal life is now. Jesus said everyone who's already believing into him is already having everlasting life. And here we have the good shepherd uh, has never lost a sheep nor will he lose one. He himself prayed to his father and said, everyone you gave me still right here with me. Speaking of those apostles, literally, he said, except the one, the son of perdition, talking about Judas, who was a devil from the beginning. So he cleared all that up and made it unmistakably clear that there's no such thing as someone having trusted into him for everlasting life, not only not already having it, but that somehow 
that everlasting life would cease because the Bible tells us that once we're fathered, we're ones who having been fathered, always being fathered out from God. The Bible says we are ones who having been saved once for all, are always being saved by the grace through faith. It says that we are ones who having been sanctified once for all, are always being sanctified or always remaining sanctified, always remaining saved, always remaining fathered out from God. So the confusion uh, apparently comes from importing things that might be perceived as necessary to uh, improve our understanding. Uh, but this is just what happens. If you leave out the purpose of the gospel, you read John 3.16, and some of us read it as gave in, lo loved, his, uh, loved the world in so much that he gave his only begotten son in order that everyone who might believe, no, it's not here might believe, that's the purpose. So when you read John 3.16 and how beautiful it is and how much love there is in the manner of his love, God the Father, to so love the world, including every single person in it, because the commission is to go into all the world and preach to every creature in it, then we notice that he did it and that everyone who's related, one who is believing into him, life's in Christ Jesus, it's in Christ Jesus, we believe in Christ Jesus, Galatians 2.16. But here, the only related one, so the only way we can become a kin and enjoy this redemption is to believe into Christ. So it's good news and it's self-evident. It just might be so disappointing to people that, well, some have spoken of the gospel as if it's but incidental. And even a Dr. Al Mohler once had to say, well, now we do need the gospel for regeneration. <laughs> uh, the gospel uh, communicates God's love, God the Father's love. The son's obedience unto death, even the kind of death of a cross, communicates this message that's written in the stars, the glory of the eternal power and Godhead that's revealed in creation itself. Uh, creation itself testifies to all this. This gospel speaks of a love that is, is, is testified by the Holy Spirit who witnesses concerning Jesus, who spoke concerning his father. So there's really nothing lacking here. We have everything we want. That is, if we want everything God gave us according to his manner of love for us. So I'm not sure. I don't know who to talk to who constantly makes their faith about people unable to trust, unable to be persuaded. John 3.36 says the one negating persuasion. So we are able to negate persuasion and we are persuadable people. The churches were persuaded by a different gospel in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 8. Paul had to tell them this persuasion, this different gospel, the means of that different persuasion is not from the one who called them by his grace, which is speaking of God the Father who so loved. So you have a blessed day. And if this encourages you, great. If it challenges you to ask yourself, why have I imported concepts and constructs into the Bible uh, well, it may be because you missed the point or purpose of this. Everything Jesus did, raising Lazarus from the dead, a glorious act to assure that his friend uh, life gave glory to God. And it encouraged it was for the good of the other disciples when he explained he's unsurpassed. He's the good uh, shepherd. There's no concept of uh, someone being a lost sheep becoming his sheep and that it was somehow um, no longer be a sheep. That's just another one of those. Uh, attempt to compensate for what's perceived lacking in the scriptures, lacking in the grace of God, lacking in the gospel of the grace of God, lacking in the persuasion by the gospel of the God that is the Father of Jesus Christ, First Peter 4, 17. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.